to charge your flight battery, connect your 12 volt power source to your charger. Plug your battery's white connector into the side of your charger. After charging is complete, cut a small piece from the Velcro supplied and attach to the end of the battery. Slide the charged battery pack into the battery holder and press the battery home firmly, but do not connect the power lead yet. Check that all linkages and connectors are attached and that rotating parts are free to rotate smoothly. Free off any linkages that show any sign of tightness or binding. Move the throttle stick and the throttle trim to the low throttle position. Center the remaining three trim levers. Extend the transmitter aerial fully. Switch on the transmitter. Be careful not to move or adjust the factory set reversing switches. Plug the battery's connector into the matching battery lead. After a few moments the onboard LED will glow green continuously. Check left and right cyclic response. Check fore and aft cyclic response. Very gently ease the throttle stick forward until the main rotors start to rotate then throttle back immediately. In the following section we look at transmitter stick movements and the effects they have on the helicopter. The right stick operates the cyclic steering controls they move the helicopter forwards or backwards and crab the helicopter to the left or right. The red circle represents the top of the transmitter stick. In the hover the cyclic controls are used to gently nudge the helicopter in a new direction. We've overdone the stick movements a bit, just to make the effects clearer. Whatever you do, don't give it this amount of stick. Small stick movements are the key to good flying. The left stick operates the throttle and yaw controls. By pushing the throttle stick forward, rotor speed is increased and the helicopter climbs. Conversely, as throttle is reduced, the helicopter descends. If the stick is pushed left, 
the helicopter yaws or rotates nose left. Pushing right will rotate it nose right. If you have a throttle right mode 1 transmitter, your controls are arranged slightly differently. In this arrangement, throttle control is shared with roll cyclic control, which crabs the helicopter to left or to right. The left stick has to look after your control, rotate nose left or rotate nose right, and also forwards and backwards cyclic control to move the helicopter forwards or backwards. located indoors in a large room, hall or office. Place the model in the middle of the room, positioning yourself at least two meters behind the helicopter and slightly off to one side. Check all controls are working. Increase the throttle gradually until the model becomes light on its wheels. All helicopters exhibit a degree of instability when approaching takeoff, as friction from the ground is reduced as the helicopter gets lighter and closer to unsticking from the surface. Observe whether or not the helicopter is wanting to move forwards, backwards or sideways. Adjust your transmitter's trims until the helicopter shows only a minimal tendency to wander off across the floor. Apply enough power to make the helicopter light on its wheels and gently push the cyclic stick forwards. Watch the model for any change of direction and use the controls to correct. Drag the helicopter back if it gets too close to obstacles. Continue taking your helicopter for a walk until you develop the automatic ability to apply the right control input when required. After a bit of practice, you'll be ready for the first hops. Just apply a small amount of extra throttle briefly to raise the helicopter off the floor and into the air for a second. As you can see, most people's first sustained hover doesn't look that pretty. As your coordination and anticipation improves, you'll soon gain confidence with the hover, which becomes easier after a smooth positive lift-off to around chest height. <laughs>